let's not beat around the bush. I wanted to get fucked up. I was embarrassed of like how I behaved. And I'm sure I had a fun time doing it when I was doing it, you know, jumping on people's cars and being real crass and, uh, and texting people late at night, W-I-D, you up, question mark. Now I owe some people some apologies. <laughs> Y'all loaded on caffeine and then we'll record a great episode. All right, welcome back to Getting Sober dot 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 again. My name is Jay and today, I am going to talk about breaking up with alcohol, but first, if you haven't yet, make sure that you are subscribed by hitting the subscribe button down below. Make sure that all of your no notifications are also turned on. We get a really big episode coming up next. This is episode 89, and the next one coming up will be another huge video. It is going to be the uh, 25 benefits of not drinking alcohol for 90 days, right? So if you're looking forward to that, comment below. A lot of you are here watching this channel because you are interested in the 20 benefits of not drinking alcohol for 30 days. And some of you are getting sober dot 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 again and trying to get to the 30 day mark. So let's get started. Oh, also too, as always, make sure that you leave a comment below, pick anything from this episode to talk about or anything that you might find helpful to this topic, maybe your personal story on breaking up with alcohol or wanting to break up with alcohol. And, um, and make sure you like this video too, because that helps to share this video with the rest of the world. So a couple things, today it's really warm, it's spring, so you might be noticed, uh, noticed that I am not wearing my normal sweater. <laughs> so my, I'm really sore, I just went to the gym. I went to the gym today and I rode my bike 10 miles and I had to take a nap. Um, and I'm super thankful that I got to do all that. But, uh, you know, are you taking advantage of this weather? Comment below. If, uh, you know, a lot of you are getting sober, um, I know that a lot of you are also trying to get in better shape um, or just some shape other than whatever you were in. <laughs> if you resonate with that, comment below. But uh, speaking of being in, in, uh, in a shape, um, whatever that shape may be, I was playing pool last night you know i play pool i won a bunch of money last night <laughs> congratulations to me but um i was playing a buddy of mine and um so i don't think i've ever officially told anybody how old i am i am um 39 years old <laughs> so i'm 39 and my buddy is uh 41. huge difference i know that not everybody has the same body type uh, we all eat different foods, we come from different, you know, environments, whatever. Gut microbes and bacteria and all that stuff and yada, yada, yada. But um, so he and I only have a two year age difference and I weigh like 160. I'm like 5'11", 160. And uh, my buddy, he is about, I'd say like the same height as me, but he weighs like 250 pounds. And he's just got like a big gut and um, he's got the rosy cheeks and the puffy, you know, like the puffy eyes and the glassy eyes, nice as pie. And he, he has a very successful business. He's married, he has a kid. I'm not married and I don't have a kid. But you know, there are high functioning alcoholics, there are high functioning uh, people that smoke weed. There are high functioning, you know, addicts of all shapes and sizes and varying addictions, right? But I was talking to him last night and he was asking me, he says, uh, he said, hey Jay, uh, how come you decided to get sober? Cause it's kind of like a thing, you know, like everybody's literally getting shit based. <laughs> at the bar they're coming back with rounds and rounds and i just keep beating people and beating people and then they go to the bar and then they get another drink to console themselves and this dude like no joke had like uh during our like our i think i beat him um i think i beat him eight to one and you know god bless him he wanted to keep paying so he you know and then so he he must have i i see i saw him he was drinking before i got there he had at least 10 rum and cokes uh, well, Diet Cokes while I was there. And uh, he said to me, you know, like, why did you, why did you want to get sober? You know, why, you know, what was the decisions, uh, you know, that led up to this? You know, a lot of people think that it's like, it's a significant event. Like, oh, it's like, you know, I had a DUI. That's what happens to a lot of people. A lot of people get a DUI and they're just like, oh, okay, that was as hard as I can go. I can't go. I'm not going to go any further. I'm done with this. This is, now this is a costly mistake. If you are curious how much a, a DUI costs, <laughs> comment below. But that information is also on my Patreon page. It's the real cost of a DUI. Um, it's something like $30,000 lifetime, I think. Um, but anyway. So uh, a lot of people think that like there's a significant, you know, event that happens, you know, some sort of tragedy or you get some bad news from your doctor or, you know, you have a, you've burned one too many bridges or, you know, you, 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 you've 
pissed off enough people, you've embarrassed yourself enough in public, but I think it's it's just, it's all of that in general. And I told them, you know, the story about some of you know, you know, some of you are new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to comment below, I wanna to get to meet you. I will try my, I'm still, in the next couple of weeks, I'll still be able to comment, about, still be able to respond to all your comments. But um, after that, I don't know, I'm only, probably only be able to respond to people on my Patreon page, uh, but we'll see. But so, you know, God give me the strength, please, to be able to respond to everybody's comments, amen. <laughs> but uh, there was no specific, thing that happened and I've told all of these stories about like how I lost my dad two years ago and he drank um he drank all of his life he drank you know like I would say like a bottle a, a bottle a day and then he ended up getting um pank or he got ended up getting uh prostate cancer which then metastasized and spread to his to to his um his spine and to his legs and his bones and all that stuff and it shut him down over the course of two years he went on. He survived pretty long, but you know, I. It's just a, a lot of factors went into it. I didn't want to. Eventually, like again, I don't have any kids, but eventually, I would like to have kids, um, or a kid, and I would hate. I would hate for my kid to be in the position that I was at with my dad, not having seen my dad for ten years. Not that I couldn't have seen my dad, but just there was some. Uh, you know, we we just maybe there was just some time and distance between us, and I would hate for my child to see me on my deathbed after not having seen me for 10 years, right? And um, I, you know, I, I don't wanna be that. I don't wanna be that person to somebody else. You know, and as my mom's getting older, uh, my mom is approaching 70. And, you know, I, you know, part of the deal that I have with God is, you know, I wanna be able to ch try to help make her life as good as I can make it and, and contribute to her having the best quality of life that she could possibly have. And I know that, you know, being a good son is something that is on my list and I'm sure that some of you resonate unless you uh, are wanting to be a good daughter or a good non-binary, whatever. But uh, I wanted to be a good a good, you know, son, a good family member, a better friend. I wanted to play better pool. <laughs> I told him that I laughed in his face. I was like, you just keep drinking and drinking and drinking and you keep getting worse and worse and worse. I don't even know why you want to keep betting money, but I got, may God bless you so you can continue losing money to me. And I, you know, you know, I was telling him, I was like, you know, I'd be in here drinking, you know, I'd have like five shots of tequila and I'd have like five beers and then, um, and then I, you know, I'd be playing worse and I'd be teeter tottering and I won't be able to see, you know, it's, it's important to have your hand eye coordination. If you can't see very well and you're not very coordinated, you're not going to be shooting really well. And there were definitely nights where I would shoot so bad, I'd be embarrassed, you know, in front of the people that were coaching me and teaching me. And I was like, oh boy, I think it's time for me to skedaddle. And, uh, you know, so, so I was trying and I was hoping that that would hit home for him because he was telling me that he was getting to that point. You know, he's got a little, he's got a little daughter and I think his daughter's like four and he's got a successful business and he comes into the bar and he says, you know, like I'm sitting here, I'm drinking, I'm drinking all these drinks and it's just habitual and it's not doing anything. I'm not even getting the buzz. And, you know, as I talk, I talked to him about the, the buzz and where I was when I stopped drinking uh, over five months ago. And I was just like, it just wasn't fun anymore. And I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, take this self-righteous position. So it's like, oh, you know, like I'm clean and so you, so should you be. You know, but it's like, you have to be able to make that decision. You have to get to that point. It's like, you can watch all these videos and I hope that you do, but you could watch all these videos over and over and over again. You could watch other sober coaches. You could read all the books that you want to until you decide that you want to be sober and get sober and do the things like I talk about like the preparation the three p's prep practice and patience right and then applying rest and recharging for your recovery right those things are all very important until you decide that you're going to actually make a real genuine effort you're going to keep having to get sober dot 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 again and then you're going to keep coming back and commenting on these videos and i don't mind i don't care if you comment that you're a daisy or again there's no shame in it but you care about you and I'm proud of you. And guess what? There's a whole bunch of us down here in the comment section too that are also proud of you. And I'm I'm like super proud of you. Like I kind of want to cry right now. Like I'm like really proud of you guys. Hold on a second. I'm really proud of you guys for hopping down in the comment section and being of service to other people. It really means a lot to me that you guys are taking this really seriously and that you're helping me. You're helping me do the thing that I can't do. I can't be there for everybody all the time. And I can't be there with you. If I could be, I would be, but I can't. So I depend on all of you. I depend on all of you to find your strength. I depend on all of you to be able to be of assistance to others, whether it be in this community, in this channel, but just like in life. Like one of my, one of my goals in life is to make this world a better place than I found it. 
That's just my general philosophy for all things. You let me borrow something, I'm probably gonna clean it <laughs> and I'm gonna give it back to you. I'm gonna polish it up and give it back to you better than I found it. That's just kind of how I roll. That's how I do things. It's like, I know what it costs. This stuff costs my time and this stuff costs my effort. And the only real currency that we have is time. And I already traded my time for these things. I already traded my time, sorry. I do have a tear. <laughs> I traded my time for this, this place that I live in and for this camera equipment. And I don't wanna continue wasting my time or having to put more time in to get more money back because I blew a bunch of my money. And those are all things, those are all factors in why I wanted to break up with alcohol. And then to answer his question, so basically, I just wanted to shoot better pool. <laughs> but you know, I wanted to be, I want to be more available to my friends and family. I wanted to remember the conversations. I want to remember the the good times that I had with my friends and my family. I want to, I wanted to, you know, like how many times have you said, um, when somebody asks you, like, did you have fun last night? And you go, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> if you resonate with that, comment below. But there were so many times in my life where I just. I was embarrassed of like how I behaved and I'm sure I had a fun time doing it when I was doing it, you know, jumping on people's cars and and screaming and shouting and being real crass and uh, and texting people late at night. W.I.D. You up? Question mark. Um, I mean, I had a blast doing all that, but like now I owe some people some apologies <laughs> and I probably owe some people some money. I'm not where I'm at financially because a bunch of that stuff, literally a bunch of that money literally went to the toilet. All the time that I spent doing a lot and a lot of you too comment, like a lot of you like are working, are also creators. Some of you are maybe stay at home moms. Some of you work in stressful environments. Like you work at a restaurant, you might work in the back of the house as a cook, or you might work as a bartender or in the front of the house and you work in a stressful position. And then the only thing, only bright spot that you have in your day is just to try to get a little quick buzz. And that's what I was talking to my buddy last night. Well, you know, when I was going to the bar, I knew that like, let's not beat around the bush. I wanted to get fucked up. End of story. Like I wanted to get a buzz. Like I didn't want to just get a buzz. Like I wanted to get a buzz and I wanted to hang on to that buzz for dear life. And I wanted to ride that wave. Cause basically the, the contract, the social contract that we have with alcohol is, all right, alcohol, listen, I will agree to this, to your suggestions and to the shenanigans that you want to get into, but I want something from you. I want to feel so good that I don't care, that I don't care about the ambitions that I had, that I don't care about what it is that I want to accomplish in life, that I don't care about the fact that I'm failing out of school or that I'm not going to get this promotion or that I'm going to have to call off late again or I'm going to have to fake pink eye again, right? But there was just a lot of embarrassing situations for me. There was like, you know, when I was in college in alcohol, you know, like I'd have like a, a final coming up or I'd have a project that I had to do and then alcohol would be like, so do you really want to do this project right now sober? Or do you maybe want to have a drink and think about it? And I'd be like, no alcohol. Last time that you said we were just going to do homework, we wound up at a strip club and then alcohol's like, hey, 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 we, I didn't know, I didn't make you go to the strip club. We went to the strip club. You're like, listen, I got homework to do. All right, I'll drink one beer. And then you drink a beer and then you end up drinking another beer. And at the end of the night, then you're just sitting at home, not doing homework or you sort of did the homework, but then you're like too tired to care. And then you're like too hungry. And you're like, now it's just, now it's just emergency food time. And then you're like, you're blowing off a bunch of responsibilities. Is your work responsibilities? Cause like, like who, like who cares? Legit question, who cares about work? right? Sober or otherwise, unless you're passionate about what your career is, you're probably just working at a job. And do you care like hands up if you don't care about working at a job? Likewise, I don't care either. But we end up becoming unmotivated to do the things that we have to do, like trying to keep a roof over our head and trying to build better relationships with people. I found myself getting to a place where I wasn't consistent. I wasn't reliable. I couldn't depend on myself. And if I couldn't depend on myself, why would I dare ask other people to take me seriously? How could I possibly depend on other people to want to spend time with me? Why would I dare ask anybody to trust me if I couldn't remember what I did last night or what I had said? And people were asking me about like, don't you remember saying that? I'm like, I don't remember saying any of that stuff. I don't remember doing any of that stuff. I don't even remember being there, frankly. 
getting myself in situations. It's like, no matter how nice of a person you are, it's like, yeah, I'm running this channel now, but there's somebody out there who's like, oh yeah, that's the guy that stole, came over to my house party and stole off the change off my dresser. <laughs> uh, you're, you're gonna be that person for somebody. Yeah, like you're gonna be, you're gonna be an example of a bad time to somebody. There's somebody that's out there that'll see you in public and be like, hey, that's that, that, that guy over there. That guy, that guy jumped on the hood of my car and then started acting like he was Rambo and started pretending like he was shooting all the other cars in traffic. There's ridiculous stories. There's always something stupid that you did. You maybe got in a verbal argument with somebody or you got in a physical altercation with somebody. Or maybe you're more of the uh, the modern era <laughs> troll and you hop on social media and you're commenting on somebody or you send somebody a text message and just projecting all of your anger and your hate and your disappointment in yourself onto other people because they were part of your life and they chose to spend their time with you. So while they chose to spend their time with you, you maybe feel like you have to project the anger that you have within you because that person didn't help you get better or be a better person or didn't stick around for the long run. And is that their fault? No. But then it becomes misplaced anger and misplaced aggression. And is that healthy? Absolutely not. So why I decided to, to break up with alcohol is because I, I had to. It was basically a toxic relationship. You have a relationship with alcohol, just like you have a relationship with your parents or just like you have a relationship with your friends. A relationship with alcohol is no different. If you think about <laughs> just time wise, how much time that you spent with your parents, like how much time do you, as an adult, how much time do you spend with your parents? Is it this much compared to alcohol or is it this much? Basically, you're spending this much time with alcohol. If you, if, if you stop and think about it, how much time have you spent with anybody else or on anything else, any of your ambitions, whether it's, it, whether it's to write a book, start a business, make a new painting, take some more photographs, whatever it is, work on your car, work on your garden, work on your house. Have you, how much time have you spent drinking alcohol or at a bar compared to writing that business plan or writing that book or doing a painting or working on the yard or actually trying to have deep, meaningful relationships with people where you weren't always relying on the crutch of alcohol. We rely on the crutch of alcohol in the beginning to get that first little buzz. And then eventually, I think for everybody that watches this channel, it stops working the way that it used to. We think about like the first, like that first high, whether it be with uh, alcohol or whatever drugs, we know that we build a tolerance. We know that all people build a tolerance. And you know, even if you just go, if you're just going to the, to the doctor and the doctor prescribes you with something, you know that after the first initial prescription, they're going to do what? They're going to increase the prescription. And then after that, you're going to taper off and you're going to build a tolerance to that. And then they're going to increase the dosage. They're going to keep increasing the dosage, increasing the dosage until eventually it's a problem. And it's a, it's a problem for you physically. So you end up trying to solve one problem and then it ends up creating a whole nother problem, right? And so for a lot of us here that are on this channel and maybe for people that are hosting this channel, abstinence tends to be the thing that's working out best for us. And then we're actually becoming more in tune with who we are as a person. There are gonna be times where like, I wasn't super sociable last night, but I've been on more of a streak of being more sociable, surprisingly sociable with people when I've been out at the bar and out in social situations, like actually working on small talk, asking people how they're doing, and then remembering every single conversation that I've had with people. It's a blessing and I'm really happy for it because that was one of my shortfall or shortcomings, just like not remembering people's names and not remembering conversations, right? And I know like I'm a easy, I'm, I'm a person, I'm, I'm easy to remember physically. If you see me, uh, you're probably gonna remember me. If you ever talk to me, you're probably gonna remember me. And I know that I'm a unique position that it's like, I'm just, I'm also just bad at memorizing names. And I remember I'm bad at memorizing conversations unless I feel like it's relevant, but I think that we all work that way mentally, right? But I needed to get a better grasp on my relationship with me and stop spending so much time with something that was so toxic for me and making me a lesser version of myself. That's what alcohol was doing to me. Alcohol was making all the suggestions. Alcohol was saying like, oh, why don't we go get some late night food? I'm like, all right, alcohol, let's go do that. And alcohol be like, why don't we go? It, it's been a while since we've uh, we've texted all the girls that we know late at night. I'm like, all right, alcohol, let's find out if they're interested this time. Probably not. 
you know, like you end up putting yourself in like stupid situations. And then again, like I said, you end up having like owe people apologies. And this is definitely not the time or the place or the era for uh, getting yourself in sticky situations. So as we continue to grow, as we continue to blossom, you have to come to the decision and the conclusion that your relationship with alcohol is either, it's either important enough to you to keep hanging on to that crutch and just know you are going to plateau. There's only so far that you can get with alcohol. It's not like one day you're gonna have an even better buzz than another day. Chances are one day you're just gonna have an even worse hangover than you did before. And the, the hangover is gonna become more frequent. The dehydration is gonna become just more real and more permanent. The ringing in your ears, the, the soreness, the, the, the lethargy that you're gonna have, the lack of energy, the lack of motivation, the lack of ambition, and you just keep trading it for alcohol. And like the real reason I believe that a lot of us drink is because like we don't want to, or we're overwhelmed with trying to make the extra effort of chasing our dreams and our ambitions. Because we think about it, we look at the whole stack of it, we look at the stack of our ambitions and we think like, I don't even know where to start and I don't know where to begin. But just like with getting sober, it, it starts with just one decision, one decision to say no to alcohol. And the next time you get a craving, say no again. Now you've got two no's under your belt. And then the next time you get another craving, say no again. Say no for a third time, and then the fourth time, and then a the fifth time. And then some of you that are unfamiliar with the 100 no challenge, it's a little something that I invented. Uh, what you do, just download a counter app, something that you can count, like every time you press it, it goes one, two, three, four, five. Um, download that, go into your app store, download that, keep that just like always running in the background. And then every time that you get a craving and you say no, count it. And then the idea is to get to 100 no's. So now you're preoccupied, not so much with like, I have, a, I have a temptation and I have FOMO and my friends are gonna be out and I wanna go out and I wanna drink and I just wanna, I just wanna drink and I just wanna get that buzz, I wanna feel, I have a really shitty day and I just wanna feel better, I wanna feel better a little bit and then you say no. Just say no and count it. Now you have the power of saying no. You have the power over alcohol. Now you're preoccupied with counting no's instead of getting the buzz. You're getting the no's instead of getting the buzz. And then a hundred no's later, you comment below on any of the videos and say, hey Jay, I did the 100 no challenge and it turns out it took me seven days to say no 100 times or it took me three days to say no 100 times or it took me two weeks to say no 100 times and I've been so preoccupied with saying no instead of being preoccupied with the fact that I can't drink that now two weeks has gone by and I've been sober and this is dope. I have not been sober for two weeks in a really, really, really long time and I think that I'm truly ready to break up with alcohol but that is a decision that you have to make. You have to make definitive statements like, I am not going to drink. I'm not going to drink this weekend. Or a super powerful one is, I don't drink anymore. I don't drink. Try it, just say it. You probably haven't said it. <laughs> just right now, just say like, I don't drink. I don't drink. Practicing. You know, if you like, think about like, if you were gonna go to, if you had a big job interview, we just go like, I have a big job interview. It's really important. I really hope that I get the job. Okay, now I'm just gonna watch TV now and not even think about it. I'm not gonna mentally, you're not gonna mentally prepare for the job interview tomorrow. You're not gonna have uh, references sitting in front of you. You're not gonna make sure that you sharpen up a, a final, super final draft of your resume. You're not gonna uh, put together a little presentation and talk about, have talking points about what you're gonna say to try to get that job. You're gonna project what you think that, what who you think you're gonna be sitting in front of trying to concentrate on the details. What are you gonna wear tomorrow? What am I gonna look like tomorrow? How am I gonna prepare for that? What, am I, what am I gonna have for breakfast? How much coffee am I gonna have? <laughs> uh, you think about the drive. How long is it gonna be to get there? What time will I leave before I get there? And if you applied that same preparation to getting sober, you would have much better success. That's what I keep trying to encourage you into doing when I talk about the preparation, when I talk about trying to get the alcohol out of your house and trying to be transparent, and not trying to, but just doing it. Being transparent with your close friends and your family members, maybe your significant other, and say like, hey, I'm not, I just made a decision, I'm not gonna be drinking this weekend, not at all. Uh, so don't tempt me, I don't wanna do it, I need to cleanse, you know me, I've been drinking a long time, I'm sure you and I are both smart adults, you and I both know that I'm not, not neither, neither one of us are doing ourselves a, a service here by drinking, we're rotting ourselves in, uh, we're rotting ourselves from the inside out. So be transparent, prepare yourself, put 
book your whole schedule with your free time. It's like, yeah, nobody wants to come home from work and then do a bunch of work. But also at the same time too, it's like, wouldn't you like to know that you've earned your sleep instead of just like time traveling with alcohol to the point where you just don't give a shit anymore. And you're so tired that like, now you're just eating emergency junk food at the end of the night. So now, not only did you just consume 800 or a thousand calories in alcohol, but then now you're, you're having a late night snack that's 1500, 2000 calories, fried food, French fries, hamburger, pizza, whatever, pizza rolls, hot pockets, whatever emergency foods around. And then you're end up tacking on more weight. So it's not, on, not only are you limiting yourself on a daily basis from getting to scratch off any of your to-do lists or any of your ambitions, but then you're gaining weight while you're at it. You are diminishing your health while you're at it. You're guaranteeing that you're going to have huge medical bills in the future. And that also too, you're, you're not going to be the person that you want to be in the future. So it's all about making better decisions instead of worse decisions, one at a time and altering your trajectory from where you're going to where you want to be. So I wish you good luck on your journey. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget to leave a comment for me or somebody else. And I will see you in the very big and very important next episode, number 90, the 25 benefits of not drinking for 90 days.